Hi guys, this is Ratchet's Raw, and we are playing Criminal Case, Best of Pass, Case 43, The Witching Hour. Let's unlock Chapter 2. Okay, okay. Continue, process is required immediately. What is it, Isaac? An altercation has erupted in the town square. A man claimed to be the victim's husband is causing a ruckus. What? A fight at the town square? Continue, let's go sort it out. Alright, man fight except for cat fight, right? My wife was an angel, it's your fault she's dead. Admit it, Miller, you know it's true, your wife was a witch. Witch, witch, witch. You just shut your butt or I'll come over there and shut it for you. Alright everyone, that's enough. You people will stop this nonsense immediately. And you, Mr. Bill, will come with us. We'd like to have a word with you. Alright, so the whole town uh, says that... Claims that uh, she was a witch. How could these people be so ungrateful and accuse my wife of being a witch? After everything that Aubrey did for them. We understand your anger, but you must contain yourself, Mr. Miller. You cannot go about town threatening violence on others. But dear colleague, you're a witch! A witch! My Aubrey was a woman of nature. She healed these people and delivered their offspring. I read that book, The Male 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 is Salty. I know what they could have done to her if they, if they thought she was a witch. Can you think of anyone in particular who would have motive to kill her? Nobody, if I were to find the person that did to this, my darling, I tied about tight and roast them over the fire. Mr. Miller, we are the ones who serve justice in this town, so we will warn you to please restrain your grief to not violent means. A good idea, Katia, while we're here, we should search the area for clues. Alright, we're gonna search the town square now. Oh, that's you cutting the page. It was a big mistake, dude. Alright, let's let's keep town square. Then this local publication has our victim's name in the headline. Headline reads Aubrey Miller denounces local resident. Side the article in which he's mentioned his fate. Perhaps you could help uncover the missing text for us. And although I'm not certain what you expect to find in a crate to produce, I, it's worth a shot looking through it. Okay. Alright, first let's search this crate. And it's the rope. I did find a coil of bloody rope in that produce rate. You don't kill tired of it into the dunking bar. Could this be part of the rope to kill you on our victim? Let's head to Viola immediately. And there's blood on it. Alright, 12 hours. Alright, now this newspaper. They had expected this article is supporting our victim. It says Mrs. Miller's accusing Mr. Rocabotter of scurry of ruining the town by making false allegations of supernatural occurrences. Mrs. Miller asserts falsehoods are destroying Grim Chapel. Mr. Rocabotter failed to mention his dispute with the victim. Let's go ask you about it. No, and Alice again? What are you doing? Oh no, it is. I'm sorry, I just got carried away. I thought there was going to be no analysis again. I don't know why. It's like, oh, I found a local paper where Mrs. Miller accused you of destroying Grim Chapel. Wait, it's a quarreling? We wouldn't have been if she hadn't been so short sighted. The foolish woman despised the fact that I was cultivating a supernatural reputation for Grim Chapel. I'm aware I exaggerate fast sometimes, but that's exactly what this town needs. Thanks to my exquisite, exquisite work, Grim Chapel is renowned for its folklore, attracting numerous visitors from all over the world. And Mrs. Bill didn't agree with that practice. All I did was ask her to wear a pointy hat for some witchy flair. I knew she wasn't real a sorceress, but the tourists would have loved it. 
It's not like I went about town reciting the Midless Maleficarium at her. Could was feel the release being labeled a witch I was killed because of it. And I hope that too was a part of your exquisitely work through chapel. No. Oh, you're not so suspicious at all. And we just wait. Let's check out this rope. And was it used in murder? Yeah, we are pins and needles ever since I discovered that Horatio Rochester was my biological father. I'm set to meet you soon for lunch, I'm just a ball of nerves. Relax, Viola, I'm certain everything will go well. Perhaps helping us with the bloody rope we found at the town square will distract you. You're right. Well, regarding the rope, I confirm the blood of it is a perfect match for the victims. The game must have dirtied the rope after inflicting the bloody gash on the victim's head. He did, and furthermore, on the rope found traces of Hamamalee's Virginia Virginiana. It's a medical plant used as a main ingredient for an astringent tonic called hazel water. With this development, it's safe to say you could use this hazel water. Katia, the is in half water now as we discovered they use hazel water. And on that note, we should return to the latest workshop and give it another two rules search. You are in hot water when I arrest you. <laughs> Alright, let's investigate victim's task. We gotta figure out now who disliked our victim and then and that's how they said that she was a witch. Actually, why is anyone calling her a witch if she just seems like a normal person? Well, this plate is suspicious. Skulls. Wow. Broken sign. Well, that's not suspicious, but what what sort of sign is very very suspicious? We're gonna see about that. Creaky Katria, what's on this dish? It looks like an arrangement of goldish biscuits. Was this a sort of a trend against the victim? Maybe a sample of the yellow liquid to that plate will tell us more. Hey, you're right, Katria. Very that broken sign could prove to be helpful. But if she was a witch, I thought it was going to be normal seeing this. <laughs> Biscuit skulls. If I'm going to say it like that. But maybe they were poisonous. It's going to be some kind of a witch. It's going to be... Snow White stepmother. <laughs> I don't know why am I thinking about her now. Now if you have a sample of the liquid for a dish of macro biscuits, let us analyze it under a microscope, Katria. Right, for a moment I thought he was going to say, let's send it to Viola. A good thing you did it because I know how to do this. Uh, instead it's going to be this broken side, right? Oh, says which? Wow. There is supposed to be sign that hung over a victim's door. Aubrey Miller opened daily. I saw a row witch on it in a red paint. Fortunately for us, that person left fingerprints behind. And if we send this to Evie, she'll be able to tell us who that was. But I can analyze fingerprints too. Well, not any fingerprints like this. I think it's hard to make it out, so that's why we are going to send it to Evie. Alright. Now this liquid, whatever that is. Oh, I have feeling it's some kind of a poison out that I see all this. There, the liquid salve you take from this is a combination of chastaberry, evening primrose, red clover, and streak detail. Why does that sound familiar? Brilliant memory, these are indeed the ingredients we saw in the fertility elixir we found earlier. That elixir was prescribed for Mrs. Putnam. So could it have been Mrs. Putnam who left these goldish biscuits at the victim's workshop? Let's ask her what she meant by it. Okay. I totally forgot about that. But whatever.
Mrs. Putnam, were you the one who left these macro biscuits at Mrs. Miller's workshop? If so, were they meant to be a threat of some kind? Heavens, no, it's a customary in Green Shop that when someone loses a family member, we make treats for the funeral. I share mine with Aubrey. Did you lose someone recently? I have something to miss carriage, which could be yeah, the latest of many. I keep losing my babies. I even tried for two dots and hazel waters, but nothing has worked. I'm very sorry for your loss, Mrs. Putnam. Does it mean Mrs. Miller's fair too the treatments weren't working? They might have if she'd continue giving them to me, but she said that it would be dangerous for my health if I kept trying to conceive, so she refused to help me anymore. Well, she had to, so... She was worried about you. It wasn't her place to tell you when to quit trying. She was just a herbalist, and I would have made her help me whether she wanted her to or not. Mrs. Potter, we hope for you to say that you disagree with her then and the murder. Okay. Now let's check out this fingerprints. Katria, have you picked up the latest edition of the Kokoji Gazette? I read newspapers, so not as of yet. Why do you ask? Well, because they published a story I sent them. This is just the beginning, too. They liked it so much, they wanted me to contribute stories regularly. Just think of it, Katharina. With Katharina and I both writing for the Gazette, we will be a couple made in journalistic heaven. Congratulations, Evie. That's great news. I can't wait to read it. And speaking of writing, we'd like to know about the fingerprint someone left behind when scrolling the wall witch on the victim's shop sign. About the fingerprints, I compared them to our archives and found a match. They belong to one Abigail Walcott. She's a resident of Green Chapel. Brilliant! Katia, let's go find this Abigail Walcott and ask what cost her to vandalize Mrs. Miller's property. Yeah, I, I don't like her already. She looks creepy. Like she could be a witch too. You're the one investigating Aubrey Miller's death, right? Tell me, was she attacked by demons, eaten by werewolves? If that is what a witch deserves. The spirit was tragically murdered by someone in this town. We should remind you that she was not a witch, no matter what you wrote on her door side. Why would you deface her property like that? I did it because Miss Brew was an evil witch. I saw her with my own two eyes. I was Miss Brew's apprentice. I saw everything. She had a collection of dark spell books and was insistent on teaching me dust to ward off the evil spirits. One night I followed her to the pile where I saw her drinking baby's blood. So many demons are flying about on a broomstick. That is truly ridiculous. It's the truth! I wasn't frightened because I read the baby was smell of a K room. I could defend myself. Others wouldn't be so lucky. I know what I saw and everyone in town said she was a witch. So what do you know? I know that your imagination is certainly quite active and that you should not go too far because I'll need to speak with you again. Don't go too far. Katea, I am at my wit's end with all this talk of sorcery. Not only does this town firmly believe such nonsense, I will last her life to it. Aubrey Miller was rumored to be a witch and was drowned in a donkey bar because of those falsehoods. But who was this fairy believer of witchcraft who murdered our victim? Mr. Miller, if his husband did display quite a bout of anger earlier, however, it was in defense of his wife's honor. And Mr. Okamoto had a falling out with our victim because he wanted her to pretend to be a witch in order to attract tourists. And then there's Miss Walcott, who seems to be utterly thrilled with the morbid details of this entire case. Katria, I don't know what to do. I need your help. But her approach, Charlie, what's gonna you in this state? Someone's put a spell on me. I've been cursed. Ah, oh, come on. You're, you're not. You're not. Somebody just pretended to be. To, you know. No, I don't think there's no curse, no spell, no nothing. Nothing, and she's not a witch. No. Alright. We're gonna start here. We're gonna continue playing Chapter 3. So, thank you for watching. Look, you like this video, and I'll see you again. Goodbye! Uh.